always going to make the impossible possible. Uh, okay, good evening. Uh, I'm Alex. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, achieving the impossible. Actually, we're going to find out if it's possible. But uh, in order to do this, we have to start with, uh, let's say, defining what is impossible. If we don't define what is impossible, then it's really difficult to see how to achieve it. So, uh, what do you think is impossible? What does impossible mean? Not possible. <laughs> Good. I really like your translation. Logically not possible. Logically not possible. Okay. Uh, we have to understand that uh, if we define something through its root, let's say, okay, impossible, includes possible in, in it. And mathematically speaking, uh, possible is uh, everything. In, in theory of mathematics, by definition, there is no scenario that has no possibility. So let's say a contradiction. We, yeah, but it, it's 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 like this in mathematics. So we have to uh, give another uh, another explanation in what another translation in impossible. What would uh, be impossible? Could it be travel so fast than speed of light? One equals two. Yeah, good. So uh, impossible is something that people. Don't think, don't tell you that you cannot do it. Okay? It's, it's, it's one sort of definition. It's the first part of the definition. Uh, it couldn't be easy. It, it couldn't be evident. If it, if it was evident, then it wouldn't be possible. So it's, let's say, a long shot. Okay? It's a long shot. It's not easy. People <laughs> tell you, no, you cannot do it. So according to current knowledge, you cannot travel faster than light. So you are bounded by the current knowledge. So you know your possibilities according to the current knowledge. But something lies outside your current knowledge. So this is what you call impossible. And it looks more like this. So uh, at this point, we say that impossible is something that people tell you you cannot do it. It's a long shot to do it, it's certainly not easy to do it, and you're bounded by your current knowledge. Okay? So, why achieve the impossible? Great, we said impossible is this, impossible is that, but why to achieve the impossible? Uh, by striving to do the impossible, man has always achieved what is possible. Because uh, it's only a state of mind what we think is impossible or not. So when we are actually uh, trying to strive for the impossible, we can actually just do what was possible from the beginning. People that constantly done no more than they believe possible have never taken a single step forward. If you achieve the impossible, then it's possible. So others can achieve it too. And uh, in, behind the impossible situations, there are great opportunities hidden. You have to go for the opportunities. It's, uh, it's, a perspective, it's, a, it's a perspective, it's a point of view. If you see impossible, you miss the opportunities. If you see opportunities, you strive against the impossible. You might succeed, you might not. But uh, it's the general truth that the human animal is the only animal that tries to surpass itself. It tries to go for the impossible. It wants to expand its options. So, you have to make a decision. You want to live a memorable life, or you just want to, to live an average life. You want to strive for the impossible, or you don't want to do it. But people that made this world going round and round are people that were actually doing things that were thought to be impossible. It's not wrong, it's not right. Go for it, don't go for it. But it's a general truth that people that did it made the world go round. So, these are your current options, and you are streaming for the impossible so that you can expand your current options. You expand your knowledge, you expand, uh, let's say, your tools, and then you can stream the impossible. So, what do we need in order to achieve the impossible? 
we said that people think impossible what you cannot do. So you have to go against the public opinion. It's a long shot, okay? Remember, it's a long shot. You have to believe it is possible. Never tell a young person that anything cannot be done. Government will, might be waiting for years, decades, for someone foolish enough to think that this is possible so that he can go for it. You see, young people don't know what is possible and what is not possible. They're not taught what they can do and what they cannot do. So they go for everything. They're into everything. But then you teach them. And you say, no, no, uh, things are being done this way and this way, and this doesn't work. This works. No, 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 this doesn't work. And then you formulate them, and uh, in the next step, they're not going for the impossible then. So, some of the, world, of the world's greatest feats were accomplished by people not smart enough to know that they were impossible. The point is that you have to believe and act as it was impossible for you to fail. Okay? So, if you just stretch it a bit, you could say that uh, this public could be poor undeveloped brains lacking in cognition. Or uh, actually not in cognition, but actually in creativity. So, you believe in it, but you have to have a vision. You have to believe in what? You have to have a greater picture. You have to think big. You have to actually see things, try to inspire people. I, I mean, you have to have a dream. And if it is for you to think, why not think big? It's, it, you don't have anything to lose. But if, if, if your purpose is, okay, now, why are we doing this? What are you going to inspire? What is the goal? What is the impossible that, you've gone, that, that you are going to surpass? What is that, that you want to expand? If you are working on something exciting that you really care about, and it's your vision, then you don't have to put so much effort in trying to motivate yourself. This pulls you in. That's all about finding what you think that should be done and do it. Uh, okay, so far so good. That's the impossible. Why to do the impossible? Uh, Okay, I have to believe in something, I have to have a vision. But now let's say that you are walking out of this hotel and uh, you see a guy with uh, some blue tights and uh, with uh, some uh, red pants over the, his tights. He looks like this. Uh, what would you think of him? Open to suggestions? Okay, he probably is a man. <laughs> he, he probably is attending Comic Con. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it, you see, the, the outfit doesn't tell you anything. But uh, what's the difference between him and him? Okay. Glasses. Now there's a difference, yeah, of course. Yeah. Glasses. Secret. Yeah. But okay, I, I will make it a bit more easy for you. What's the difference between him and him? Mm -hmm. He's a weirdo, he's a superhero. Yeah, something like it. But you see, the, the fact is that you can recognize him as a superhero, not because of the outfit, because he's looking like a clown with the outfit. But now he's flying. He has extraordinary capabilities. And that's what he, it distinguishes the clown from the superhero. It's not like, uh, okay, I believe I can do anything, but the thing that he can't do anything. It's the fact that he can actually deliver. So, everything about achieving the impossible is about having these extraordinary capabilities. And now I might disappoint some of you, but this is not something that everyone has. This is why they are extraordinary. If it was ordinary, then anyone could do it. The, the reassuring part is that uh, you don't know if you can or you can't. So, the point is to go for it, but it doesn't mean that in the end it will deliver. The point is that you have to understand that this is what distinguishes great directors, great managers from leaders. Because directors can direct, can do things right, but leaders can do the right things. So, we are here and 
of course, uh, if we say that uh, you want to be acknowledged as a leader, you have to have some social benefit on what you do. If you don't have social benefit, then okay, it's uh, a guy with extraordinary capabilities can scratch his head with his foot, but who gives it there? So if you are like this, okay, Hanko can fly, is fast, is strong, uh, but he just drinks beers and sleeping on benches. No big deal. You can just put a balloon and make a big fly, but who cares? So the point is that there must be social benefit. Because if there is no social benefit, this will go down. This will crash. So the point is uh, try to do what's your vision. Try to do the impossible, but try to add some social benefit in it. So let's go back to the extraordinary capabilities. At first, you have to give a different perspective. If you don't have a different point of view, if you cannot see things different, that other people see, then how can you overcome the obstacles? I mean, it's impossible because someone tried to do it and hit on a wall. Now, how do you overcome the wall? There are obstacles there, but you have to see things different. You have to see things that other people don't see. You have like see a detour through the hyperspace and try to detour things so that you can fast uh, travel faster than the light. So that you can travel in time. It's, it's always like this. If you just fit in and don't put your own perspective, you cannot achieve anything more than it's already achieved. So, different point of view. If you have a different point of view, others are restricted to the current point of view and you can fly. You can go elsewhere. Because the thing seems difficult to you, don't think it's impossible for others also to do it. People think things are difficult. If you don't think it's difficult, just don't trust their word that it's difficult. Because it's difficult for them doesn't mean it's difficult for you too. It's like, uh, it's deep in here. No, no, it's not deep. You see that it's deep. One who can see the invisible can do the impossible. It's a point of view. It's a perspective. It's how you're supposed to act. Give your perspective back. This is what you have. If, if you have some, something more, give something more. But the point is, give your own perspective. Don't just be included in a group. Form the group. Try to do something about it. So, resourcefulness. The most resourceful guy I know, Coyote. You have to be resourceful. You have to find things. You have to work things out. Find and exploit all your resources. You have to be resourceful if you want to achieve the impossible. It's not an easy task. Endurance. Oh, endurance. If you are the coyote, you need endurance. Endurance. The power to withstand pain or hardships. The ability or strength to continue despite fatigue, stress, or other adverse conditions. You have to endure. I mean, really, you have to endure. It's so many things that will come upon you when you are trying the impossible that you have to endure. But, you know, impossible is not a short run. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's like trying to take a bike and go like 90 kilometers around the Zurich Lake. It's, it's not something that you can just, okay, I'm strong enough to do it. You are strong enough, but for how long can you stay strong? I mean, duration always matters, no matter what they say. It's like, for how long? It's, you're, you're playing games, and in these games, you always have this bar. You say, okay, you can do what you're doing, but for how long you can do it? And this bar drops, drops, drops. And the point is, until it's finished, what will you achieve? I mean, can you do the impossible? Is there any stamina ahead where you are heading? So, patience. It's wrong. It's a long way ahead. You need to have endurance. You will, have, you will find hardships ahead of you, but uh, you need to have patience. You need 
to bring things together, small things together, so that they can work. And you need to be patient. Patient with yourself, patient with people working with you, patient with uh, everything that is trying to go to this direction. Uh, so, difficult is what takes a little time. Impossible takes a little more. Be patient. Great things are not done by impulse, but by a series of small things brought together. Even if you can uh, think impossible acts that were popping out from someone's mind, you have to keep in mind that this state of mind that led him to achieve the impossible was not an instant state of mind. It wasn't like, okay, I was just doing the, the whole routine that everyone is doing, and one day I woke up and said, okay, why not uh, invent gravity now? Or why not uh, try to do something different? People that actually invented something, even if it was by chance, it was because they were looking for it. So, great things are not done by impulse. It's a long way ahead. And you have to keep this certain state of mind if you want to, f to finish, to go to the finish line. You have to take risks. You have to have courage. If there is an absence of fear, it means that you are a loony. But to confront your fears is what will actually make you courageous. Will make you, okay, I will take that risk. I will go for it. I can adapt in new situations. I have the mental ability to, to adapt. I have the mental ability to confront difficult situations and I will go for it. And you will need to do this. Because when you are going to have this leap in uh, the unknown, the leap that is beyond the knowledge, you have to be courageous because people will not be easy on you. People haven't seen what you have seen, so they won't be easy on you. I mean, uh, wrong from visionary, th th there is a really fine line between wrong and visionary. But th the point is that you have to be visionary to see it. So try, try to confront your fears. Try to take risks if you can take it. So to, to sum up, uh, you have to have an inspiration box, to think outside of the box, uh, you have to be different, you have to be yourself, you have to be unique, you have to have extraordinary capabilities, endurance, stamina, you have to, okay, you will hit the wall, but you have to find a way to surpass it. Uh, actually, you, you, you have to find a way. You have to find a way which, let's say, the pink can fly. The, the balloon didn't work, okay? So if you find a way, maybe the coyote will cut the road run. And he actually does in this last episode. But I've, I will share with you a, a small secret. When you are actually going to this direction, uh, if, you, if, if the goal is something really big, if, if it's, act, it's actually something really meaningful, then uh, you, you will find a small repository of energy back there because the thing that you are trying to do is too big to fail. When something is too big to fail, then you see that maybe if you don't think at this point that there is, you will have some more energy. There. You will have some small repository of energy. So, this is about uh, achieving uh, impossible. But do we have a different magnitude of impossible? Okay, this was an individual impossible. I, I couldn't fly, but now I can fly. But uh, is there any other impossible? I, I, I mean, it could be a social impossible. I, okay, I, I became Superman now. Does this mean that I can uh, bring world peace, even if I am Superman? No, I can force no. it. No, <laughs> and if, if, even if I force it, I cannot be everywhere. At the same time, trying to pretend that uh, no one will do anything else that I say. It's, it's, it's an individual impossible to become a superman, but it's a social impossible to, let's say, have a, a perfect uh, economic theory or something imposed to someone. So now we are moving in a greater, in a different magnitude of impossible. We also have, uh, let's say, the personal impossible and the local impossible. Okay. Uh, Let's say that if I score 100 points in an NBA game, it's uh, a general impossible, individual impossible, but general, in, in, in general terms speaking. But uh, if uh, I score, let's say, 
30 points, it's, it was impossible for me, but now I do it. So it's a personal impossible. It's not in this magnitude of uh, an individual impossible, but it's, it was impossible for me, now I can do it. But uh, let's see what it gets to go for a social impossible, which is a greater magnitude of impossible. We were here. Okay. Okay, we, we went here. Okay, now we have individual impossible. And we say that if you want to go to a greater magnitude, you have to team up. So uh, this is what you're expecting? Teaming up? Great. Is it great? No, it's not great. Same. Why it's not great? Because uh, on the first hand, you have uh, restrictions. Not anyone have extraordinary capabilities. You cannot just find 20, 50, 100 people with extraordinary capabilities to have this. This will go down. This doesn't exist. What you are aiming for is this. You have to team up. But you have to exploit the certain capabilities that each one has. You have to acknowledge each one's capabilities and try to exploit them in the best way that you can. That's why Batman is a greater hero than Superman. Because he has leadership capabilities. He is a leader. He, he has uh, also a team with him. So, this is teaming up. What is the extra capabilities that you need in order to team up? You have to inspire people. Even if you believe in something, even if you have a vision, now, we expect you to pass this vision to others. We want you to try to pass this vision to new people. You have to inspire people. So you have to make things happen. If you say, I can fly, OK, congratulations, I don't believe you. If you see me fly, now you say, mm, she can do some things. She is an achiever. Maybe we should uh, try to cope with him, try to see What's going on there? So people will get more and more involved in what we are saying, in what we are talking, in what we are doing. So keep calm and try to achieve things. You have to reassure people with you that when they take the leap in the unknown, that they have a safety net. You have to try to make people feel comfortable where you are. You have to make sure that people are not uh, actually pulling on their own direction when uh, it's not the common direction. You have to motivate people. This is a whole new, set, new whole set of competencies that you are needing. It has nothing to do if you are, let's say, a superhero or not. So you have to add value in things. If you want things to become better, you have to add value in them. When you are about to achieve the impossible, it's about uh, adding value to yourself. When it, becomes to when it comes to leadership, it has to do with uh, adding value to others, adding value to your team. So if you want to be a leader, you must have ideas. If no, you're just a follower. So add value. One of the most important leadership lessons is actually to find out that you are not the smarter one always in the room. You have to leave some room for other people's ideas. You have to acknowledge that someone else might have a better idea than yours. It doesn't have to be your friend. It doesn't have to be your ally. It doesn't have to be, I don't know who, he might be your opponent. But he might have a better idea than yours. Try to take and make something out of it. And being a leader is like being a lady. If you have to go around telling people what you are, you aren't. It's, it's like uh, if you want to be a leader, people will choose you as a leader. So leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. You have the vision, you believe in it, but if you cannot achieve the impossible, if you cannot do what other people can't do, if you can't sign up for things that other people don't sign up, 
then you are not a leader. So great leaders don't tell you what to do. They show you what to do. This new set of competencies that we are now trying to find out has to do with diversity. You are trying to cope with different people, with a different state of mind, with different goals, with different everything. Okay? So how can you cope with this thing? Everyone is different. So in order to bring them together, you have to add a purpose. If you have a bunch of bricks, it will just stay a bunch of bricks. If you add purpose to a bunch of bricks, it might become a house. Purpose is what brings th things together. It's like if you have a purpose, you feel like you belong in something greater. You feel like you belong in something that is above you. And if I take something out from this great, uh, let's say, puzzle, then you see what it's missing. Because the thing that was there was contributing something. And now he's not there, so he's missing. His contribution is missing. If you leave different people uh, individually in a room, they will all be strangers. If you actually put them in a team, and so that they will have to be together, they will be actually uh, trying to substitute one for the other. So, the point is to add a purpose in what you are doing. Leadership. Leadership. If you cannot go through a whole idea, a whole string of ideas, don't judge them. Don't judge things that you don't understand. First of all, try to understand what the other people are talking about and then try to judge them. If you cannot go through the whole uh, string of line of thoughts, don't judge them. It, it says, all you've done is this all day. Do something useful, like helping your brother drag those rocks up to the hill. So it's, don't judge what you don't understand. So we were, we're going to talk about some communication skills now. Or, or not, okay, I, just talk about the little prince. Mm -hmm. Does everyone know the little prince story? Or a thought to, take, to say it all? Okay, we have Saint Exupery, we have the little prince, and the little prince was in a, from another whole different universe, and he came down to here, and he fell into the desert. And the desert is uh, Saint Exupery, which uh, is a pilot, and uh, his plane is not working anymore. So he is uh, wandering in the desert, and he's trying to fix his airplane. So here comes the little prince and says to the Saint Exupery, "I want you to draw me a ship." Cool. So he tries like this, he makes a ship, and uh, the little prince says, "Oh no, no, no! This ship is already very sick. Uh, make me another." So he goes like this. And uh, the little priest says, oh, my friend, you see yourself, this is not a sea, this is a round. Okay, I will try again. I will find something like this now. Uh, no, no, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I imagined. So he says, okay, this is a box. The, inside this box, it's your sea. And he goes, yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. Leave some room for people to express themselves. You cannot know always what they have in mind. You cannot express what other people have in mind. Leave them some room to express themselves. Because sometimes this is what they are looking for. Okay, now back to his planet. The little prince has a, a flower. We have the flower, we have the ship. And the little prince is afraid that the ship might eat the flower. So he goes like, uh, no, you believe that flowers are me because he has his rose and uh, Saint Exupery is trying to fix his airplane. So she, she thinks that she has so much more serious things to do about uh, arguing about a flower that it's not here and it's in, in a different universe or something. So she says, no, no, I believe nothing. Can you see I have my, thang, my, my hands on something serious? Uh, okay, whatever you say, it's okay. Sometimes it's highest priority to support little prince needs. And that means that things that may look insignificant to you may be unbearable for others. 
The thing that you might be a superhero doesn't mean that anyone can fly. So if you have a team, if you need to team up, if you need to become a Batman, you have to have in mind that other people don't have the same uh, way of thinking with you. Try to be supportive with other people. You have to support your team on their needs, not on your needs. So on his way back here in, uh, in Earth, Little Prince went through some other planets. In his first planet, his first uh, journey, he found uh, the great king. So he says, sir, over what do you rule? And he replies, over everything. Everything obeys instantly. I do not permit any subordination. So he says, uh, I should like to see a sunset. Could you order the sun to set? And he says, if I order the general to fly, sorry, if I order the general to fly, from one flower to another like a butterfly, or to change himself into a seabird. And if the general did not carry out the order which I used, uh, which I gave him, what would be wrong, me or him? One must require from each one the duty which each one can perform. Accepted authority, and accepted is because you are a leader, not a director, not a manager, rests first of all on reason. You have to be reasonable on what you ask. And the reason is to ask what people can do, not what you want them to do. After this, he goes on another planet and he finds another person which says, okay, clap your hands. Uh, I am really important, admire me. These are people that you are going to meet in everyday life. Another, uh, another person was like, okay, three to five, five and uh, seven, 12, 12 and three and 15 or something like this. So he says, what are you counting? Uh, during the 54 years, I have been disturbed only three times. I have no time for nothing. So people might think that what they do is really important. It's much more important what you are doing. So they don't have time to waste on your things. There are some, such people. There are people that actually just follow orders without knowing why to follow orders. Oh, why have you just put out your lamp? And why have you just lighted again? I do not understand. Those are the orders. There's nothing to understand. Orders are orders. It's not to judge this kind of people. I mean, they exist. You have to accept it. It's not bad or good. It's how you exploit this kind of thing. There are other people that say, uh, oh, look, here's an explorer. No, no, I'm not an explorer. I'm a geographer. I'm very important. I'm a geographer. It's not a geographer who goes out to count towns, the rivers, the mountains, the seas. I'm not the guy that is going to do the work. I'm here because I'm really important and uh, I have other people to write the, to, to give me the information so I write it down. And if, if, even if there are no other people, I'm still a geographer and just waiting for other people so that I, I can be a better geographer now. So the point is that there are different kinds of people. You need to get something out of everyone. Don't treat all the same and don't have the same expectations from everyone. And this is what it means to be just. Try to judge people upon what they can do. So afterwards, he goes somewhere far away from the desert. He sees a fox. He's talking to the fox, and he says, oh, I want you to, to play with you. So the fox goes, no, no, I cannot play with you. I'm not tamed. So he goes, OK, what does this tame mean? It means to establish ties. You have to establish ties with your team. And it's because in the beginning, it's like, it says to me, you are still a little boy, just like 100,000 other little boys. To you, I am a fox like 100,000 other foxes. One only understands the things that tames, and what does tame mean, actually. It is the time you have wasted for others that makes them so important. You became responsible for what you have tamed. You are responsible for your team. So afterwards, uh, the little prince goes on a mountain and says, Good morning. He says, Good morning, good morning, good morning, the echo. So he says, uh, Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? The echo. He goes, like, Be my friends. I'm all alone. He says, I'm all alone. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. And why? Because you have to choose people that are complementary. 
not people that think that, that think just like you. You don't have to pick people that are alike. Because then you are with yourself. You have to pick people that are different than you are. That they can contribute something different. Because then you are just hearing the echo. That's the point on teaming up, on having communication skills, on being a great leader. So at last they're trying to find a whale because they're going to die from thirst. And they are walking a bit in the desert. So he says, uh, I'm thirsty. My dear little man, I'm about to die of thirst. So the little prince says, I'm thirsty too. Let us look for a whale. So you have a suggestion. It kind of sounds crazy to you. Uh, okay, it's absurd to look for a whale at random in the middle of the desert. But nevertheless, let's start walking. Why? Because I have nothing better to suggest. Okay, you might give me a suggestion. If, it, if I don't have anything better to do, I have to trust you. I cannot do anything better than you suggesting. I cannot think. I cannot unthink you. You thought something that I don't believe in, but I cannot think anything better. So I will trust you. And they have walked for several hours. They have met them in February. They were tired and blah, blah, blah. They found the web. Sometimes you have to show trust, even if you don't believe in something, just because someone else does. This is showing trust to your team. This is standing up for your team. Make, it, make them feel included in what you are doing. All men have the stars, but they are not the same thing for everyone. For some, for travelers, the stars are guides. For others, are no more than little lights in the sky. For others, who are scholars, are just problems. For my businessman, they were wealth. But all these stars are silent. You and you alone will have the stars as no one will have. We can have the same goal, but in our minds, it's not the same. I can be thinking, let's say, uh, for a great project about humanity, you would be in for it, but it doesn't mean that we have the same thing in our minds. Let people to have in our minds what they want to have. But acknowledge the thing that no one has what you have in your mind. Don't expect other people just to uh, try to sense what you have in mind and uh, try to accept the, the whole. Just try to put people in the same direction as we are going. This doesn't mean that everyone actually has his mind on your mind. And finally, you have to know how to reward people. If you have a team, try to reward your team as they would want to be rewarded, not as you would want to be rewarded. I'm very fond of sunsets. Come and look at sunsets. And you have to know what to give if there is to reward something. So let's go a bit in our family, in our story. I would just say a fiction story but has to do a bit with Mensa. It's just another story, it's Al's story, and it starts something like this. Uh, it's far, far away in a really small country, it's a really small national Mensa. So here goes Al and says, what I had in mind was to establish some more activities for gifted youth. Okay. So here goes the chair and says, you know of course that such thing doesn't exist in our land, we don't know what gifted youth is. So, uh, no one knows about gifted children. Uh, she goes like, isn't it the reason why we should do something about it? I mean, I mean, isn't our purpose to try to do something about it? So he says, this is impossible. We would uh, never pull out something like this, but uh, I will let him try. Because if I let him try, despite his forthcoming failure, he will be active for some time. So, it's a good decision to let him try. Of course, why not? But you know that if there is anything to be done, it is you that you should do it. So there are some other people's fellow mentions. Uh, I was thinking we could throw a major event about gifted youth. It is a good start in order to raise social awareness, blah, 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 blah. So there are people saying, oh, that's not going to work. Uh, we've tried it before. It's a waste of time. We don't want to do this, oh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and he goes like, maybe try something different. Now he's trying to put in his own perspective. 
He's trying to add value. What he's doing is trying to give uh, a different point of view. So he says, uh, some side events, uh, we could also ask uh, associated organizations to participate, we could uh, just team up with other people, make, make this bigger, we could make, add value in it. So he says, it sounds interesting, but uh, be sure that uh, organization A will never agree to that. Uh, also, Professor B doesn't think much of us and won't come. I don't know if there is anyone else to address it. So, you have constantly some uh, something that you have to overcome. So, if you are determined, you say, I will have to contact the organization A and Professor B, also International Men's Science, University C, from abroad, and person D uh, that is accepted as a gifted person in our society. Also find alternatives E, F, and G. But if I just email them, I, okay, I probably all the previous men just emailed them and they probably didn't respond. So if I just email them, they wouldn't take my offer too seriously. I have to do my research first and write something customized to each of them. So you go like, uh, dear sir, I do research with a type blah, 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 about gifted youth, and it suits perfectly with the huge event that our organization is going to throw. We would be honored if you would be one of our speakers. So there are like uh, some responses uh, coming back. Organization A, we will send a speaker for your event. Professor B, it is uh, an honor to participate. University C, we could have a Skype conference or something. Alternative E and G, we would like to support your effort. So you're starting adding value a bit by bit. You're trying to customize things. You're trying to put your way in, in there and try to, to do something. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, you have to find a way for person D to participate because the person that is actually a knowledge as a gift person in your society and will definitely add value to you. But he doesn't respond to your email. So you have to find another way. Ah, I will go and visit on his lecture. I will go personally and try to make contact with him. Could you be the keynote speaker in my event? Oh, you were talking seriously in the email. Yes, I, I guess I could. And now you have started growing. Now there is something to sell. There is something to uh, make people believe in. You're trying to make a list. What is it that you have to do? What, which are your tasks? I have to find the whole for the event, the promotion, the funding, the side event, the website, the organizational needs, other arrangements. Of course, the whole of the events is like the number of attendees, course research, catering, negotiations. Uh, it's also promotion, design, electronic banners, radio commercial, video commercial, event magazine, website, banners, flyer, posters. Uh, it has to do with promotion to create a list of schools, media, relevant blogs and sites, send press releases to social networks, created lists, databases of partners. You have to somehow find some funding, uh, budget estimation. Contributory benefits, write a proposal, make a presentation, translation, list of potential financial and media sponsors. You have to follow the side events, uh, the IQ testing, find some calls for them, uh, book for the contact publishers, exhibition, collect gifted uh, youth creations, exhibiting templates, etc. etc. Uh, you have to get the website on. So you have to design the sitemap, design the graphics, programming, add content, translate content, application forms, debugging, updates, and uh, okay, yeah, we'll have to make some more room. Because you have to, the organizational needs, you have to distribute the flyers and posters, response to applications, database of attendance, you have to have the technical testing and secretarial support. Uh, along with this, other arrangements, you have to find a cameraman, find a men's deputy, uh, has statistical analysis of the applications, attend the certificates, and schedule complaints. So, uh, okay, this is done. Uh, these are the tasks to be done. So, you go with this and you say, okay, I will probably solve this in the board and say, oh, it's great, yeah, you see, I have the whole plan, just show me the persons that would actually do it, and then it would be great to organize all these things, etc., etc. So, here comes an oh, excellent work. Take that money and uh, make it happen. There are also volunteers to help you with this. Of course, there are always more volunteers. Uh, I suppose I could probably do some translations if needed. Uh, I could help with the programming part. Uh, I'm a film director. If you make some arrangements for me, I could help uh, with the video commercial. And uh, the, the most beloved of all, it's uh, I could give you my opinion. I'm very good in giving my opinion. And this is a very <laughs> interesting thing. Yeah. I 
could leave in my opinion if you want afterwards. So it's going like uh, well, there are all these tasks that need to be done, and uh, the budget uh, is more like this. Uh, so it's an event for 1,000 people, for God's sake. Oh, that's okay. Just organize a gathering for 100 people, it will be fine. So where are you standing now? Ah, you're standing somewhere here. Yeah, this is the current challenge. You have to do everything on your own. There are some obstacles. You have to find funding. You have to do everything from secretarial support to everything. And uh, this is a possible outcome. Yeah, no. could be harsh. Uh, this is another outcome, an alternative. So, would you take the risk? Would you go for it? Uh, now it's trying to achieve the impossible. So, the old had had lots of uphills. I know that I should have finished with the translation yesterday, but I haven't started yet, so you will have to do it on your own. Uh, we're sorry to inform you that our radio station is closing, so we won't be able to sponsor your event. Uh, unfortunately, Mention International hasn't any procedures yet to fund such activities. Uh, you, will, you should not regard our arrangement for sponsorship valid. Uh, we thought we would be have ex exclusivity. Since we're not exclusive, we won't sponsor you. Uh, you were supposed to upload the website yesterday. You assured me of that, and now I'm in Australia. Oh, I know, but you have to finish it on your own. I don't have time. Uh, we know that the event is tomorrow, but alternatively, you will not be able to attend us. Well. Oh, uh, national elections are thought to be conducted the same day as your event. Oh, okay, it's possible. But there were also some downhills. Uh, it's like it happens to be able to come from the US for your event, so besides the teleconference, I could also throw a workshop for you. Uh, we're very interested in your funding your project, so that we will give you some funding. Uh, I can fill your gap in the program. Uh, I am in teaching in the university and gifted youth education, and uh, of course, friends. Hop on, I'll help you distribute the flyers and posters to the schools. Uh, after a couple of emails and a couple of phone calls, mm -hmm. uh, and some follow-up emails and uh, some hours of work, uh, I ended up with eight speakers, three partners, four funding sponsors, 16 media sponsors, and uh, around 900 attendants. So it goes like, well done. This was a full-time job for a whole team. Good, great. Maybe you could organize something like this every couple of years. Uh, doesn't look like they got your point of view. They're not quite in the same page. Uh, it was my side occupation, but considered it as the first step, I wanted to do something more meaningful. I was thinking about the first programs for gifted youth in our land. So now you're going for something greater. So now you're stepping up. You're going for a greater magnitude of impossible. So other people that saw that you can manage things, that you can make things happen, will go like, I will help you write the courses, I will get the classes on camera and you can get an educational portal, any secretarial overhead will be on me, I will back you up in the teacher's education program, I will help you to promote the programs, I will help you to the parent support, I will find activities for the classes, let's make a summer camp. And it's always like this. You have to do something on your own if you want other people to be included. No one will just say, oh, this is what you want to do? Great, I will do it for you. You have to do things. You have to make things happen. And maybe if you make things happen, something like this might come up. If it plays well. I don't promise.
let's say that uh, all this have to do with literacy. Literacy has nothing to do with imposing yourself to others. It's about uh, others accepting you as a leader. You won't force yourself on them, the circumstances will. And trust me, young people have the thirst and new ideas to back you up. Guide them. The most of your resources are lying on young people. I don't say that no older people will ever help you or something, but they have their minds set. Their minds are already set. You can take advice from them, but they are not going actually to change what their mind was already been thinking. And if this doesn't change, it means that they won't accomplish anything that they haven't already accomplished. Management is doing right things. Leadership is doing, no, it's doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. So you might end up with something like this. Yeah, it's better. Uh, Xavier schools were gifted. So, what I want to sum up is, I want you to remember that if you do not go in to do what you want to do, no one else will do it for you. Impossible is like an opinion. It's not a fact. Someone thinks that this is impossible. If you believe otherwise, just do otherwise. And it's, it's hidden in impossible, I am possible. So, just remember that at first it could just be your dream, uh, afterwards it might seem impossible, then improbable, but in the end it will actually see inevitable. So the point is that all those things that you want to do, just go out and do them. Don't wait for the right moment. Make the right moment. Uh, the end. So, is it possible that this is the end? Uh, no, it's not the end, of course. Because there are people who might not be able to reach the impossible, and we have to say something about it. So, even if you can't fly, you are not super, okay, uh, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, keep on moving. Try to do your best. You see things and you say, why? But I dream things that would never were and say, why not? This is what you have to be in. You have to make things happen. It, and good things come to those who wait, no. Go, it happen to those who go out and earn it. You have to go out and do things if you want things to happen. But the most important thing is don't compete with others. There is no competition. It's, it's about doing the best that you can do. After you've done the best that you could ever do, why worry for the outcome? Is there anything else you could do? No. You did the best you could, so it's okay. The outcome doesn't matter. Because there is nothing else you could do about it. You cannot say what cards will come in your hand when the deck is split. The only thing that you can do is to arrange how to play these cards. So just try to do the best. And now this is the end. <laughs>